After the femtosecond laser cut, the lenticule needs to be separated from the adjacent corneal tissue. The anterior surface of the lenticule needs to be separated from the cap, which is the anterior portion of the cornea that is left in place. The posterior surface of the lenticule needs to be separated from the posterior cornea. And of course, the edge of the lenticule needs to be made completely free. Now you want to do the anterior dissection first. So you want to separate the lenticule from the cap before you dissect the lenticule from the back of the cornea. If you reverse this sequence, you will make your life difficult. It is possible to dissect the posterior surface of the lenticule before doing the anterior dissection, but it's much harder to do because then you will have to do the second dissection working against the cap, which will give much less counter pressure. So dissect anteriorly first. Of course, there are different ways to do the dissection of the lenticule. Personally, I like to go in with the spatula and find the superior pocket that will bring the spatula above the lenticule. Then I go over the lenticule, but I do it eccentrically, leaving one third of the lenticule to the left of the spatula and two thirds to the right. The reason for this is that one should always avoid going over the center of the cornea with the tip of the spatula because if you are going to rupture the lenticule or damage the corneal stroma, it will most likely happen at the tip of your instrument. Once I have reached the other side of the cap cut, I dissect towards the right, all the way to the periphery of the cap cut. Then I will dissect to the left, again avoiding the center of the cornea as much as possible. After this dissection, the spatula needs to be entered in the inferior pocket bringing the spatula under the lenticule. Again I will first go all the way to the other side of the lenticule, followed by a dissection to the right. However, now I will leave a small triangle undissected, which will keep the lenticule in place when dissecting the left hand side. Then I go to the left of the lenticule and as you can see it is the small triangle that I have left in place that prevents the lenticule from sliding. After the dissection on the left is completed, all I need to do is go under the small triangle and the lenticule is completely free. So now in real time... The same surgery from another angle. 